welcome to unit two of the course. Uh, I think things are going well so far. I hope you do as well. Uh, we've gotten some good feedback, and we've hopefully changed some things as a result of that feedback, so please keep that coming to us. Uh, this past week, we did have a live Reddit event uh, where you could ask me anything, and many people did. Uh, I thought it was a really interesting event. I really enjoy participating in those live events. Uh, it is archived uh, and actually still active, although I probably won't be answering any of those questions within that context. Uh, but you can go back and look at that yourself, uh, see some of the answers that, that I gave, but also other people from the community gave as well. There's a lot of other interesting answers within that space. Uh, I think some of the affinity groups are off to a good start. There's many affinity groups that actually have good sized audiences and good sized participation that's going on in there. Those include the math games, which was started by SM Vought, who I think also was uh, active in the, one of the previous courses. It's a name I recognize. Um, also the uh, AR games, uh, which I participated in briefly this week, as well as Ed Games for Children and Higher Ed are among the groups that I've seen standing out as uh, really active affinity groups. Um, please feel free to continue to grow these as well as, as new ones as well. Um, it's not just participation in terms of uh, numbers of members, but the active conversation that's going on there. And that hopefully will be useful for you as you move forward in terms of getting feedback on your ideas, particularly as you think about uh, more experts within the domains that you're dealing with. So if you're dealing with math games, having other people who have interest and expertise in math games will give you better feedback on your projects. Uh, the working groups are also sort of getting off to a, a slow but good start. There's been a few working groups where we've seen some good connections going on. Those are the groups that get created dynamically each week based on your surveys if you want to join one of those groups. Uh, we hope that people continue to use those. If you have joined a working group that you think is effective with one or more other people, you don't have to join a new one. You can continue that working group or just create your own private or public space with those people who you've worked with there. Uh, if you don't think that it's been particularly effective, you can feel free to fill out a survey again and, uh, and join a new one. One of the things you'll see in there is uh, it notes what unit you're working on. So if, for example, you're lagging within the course, which is totally fine, uh, you can choose to specify people who are working on the same unit that you are. Uh, the game blocks activities are going well. I noticed Rupert Rennick, uh, Renata Mundum Ribeiro doing some nice work there. Uh, I th what I'll point out there is those are nice examples uh, that, that show some interesting dynamics. And you should feel free to look at these projects yourself, look at the code, borrow from some of those projects. Uh, you don't have to create everything by yourself. You can certainly share and, uh, and learn from others in the community. That's exactly what the tool is supposed to be about. Make sure you give attribution where, where that's appropriate. Uh, but you should feel free that the projects are all open for a reason and that you should learn from other people's work. Uh, the mapping gameplay uh, assignments had some interesting results. I'll point out Tom Scutt and C. Marlowe who made some interesting visualizations of the work that they uh, presented within that space. And it was also nice and comprehensive, showing different games across many different decades. Uh, and it made me think about games that I played at different points in my life and in different eras. Uh, and really made me think about how much particular games and particular times in my life really made such a difference. I think about the early, games of, uh, early days of video games in education, things like Oregon Trail, Lemonade Stand, and how those mattered to me. I think about games a little bit later in the CD-ROM era, like Myst, and how that made a difference to me. And those games are sort of archetypes in my own life that influence my own thinking about game design and just in terms of the way I think about problem solving, I think. So as you're designing your own games, you should be thinking about the ways that you want to influence um, people's lives at, at different times. And that might be um, kids who are young, it might be adults who are, are, are open to new learning opportunities. Uh, the frameworks that you designed around uh, existing games uh, were, were interesting uh, as you, you applied to, in, to, to games. RBJ 2003 applied the SGDA framework, for example, um, in a nice way. Others also applied that framework that we provided to you. Um, and then look, taking a look at some of the other games, so William Wagoner presented uh, Oregon Trail, which was really nicely graphically presented with, with uh, 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 both box art and other art from that game at that particular era that it was out. Uh, another person uh, presented work on Phoenix Wright. Uh, and the interesting thing there was that it was about a story of how that person had implemented the game uh, in their own lives and really reflected on that. It wasn't exactly what we had asked for in the assignment, and that's actually totally acceptable. If you reflect the spirit of the assignment in a way that's unique and personal to you, you should feel free to do that, and that actually makes the assignment more meaningful. And the comments that followed up on that really showed that that was meaningful, and the other people uh, certainly appreciated that. And finally, Nancy Hyde presented Monster Physics, sort of a nice detailed analysis of that game. As people design curriculum around existing games, uh, there was an interesting run around League of Legends uh, by Marielle D. And Edward Sheik 
uh, took an interesting perspective on NBA T 2K and showed how that could be used to understand business, uh, which was a nice application of an existing game. Uh, again, it's okay to lag within the course. Uh, that's totally fine to be, to be now starting week one, uh, unit one uh, in, this, in this later weeks. We've designed these units to be purposely flexible. Some of them will be longer to allow you more time, but it's okay to be in different units of the course, and lots of other people will be in those other units as well. Um, you should also feel free to pick and choose amongst activities. So if there are some activities that you feel like are less meaningful to you, you can choose to not do those and move on to the other activities. Uh, it's really, we treat this course as a buffet where you choose the things that are most meaningful to you and choose to act on those things. Uh, we also have uh, a, a note on feedback. So for some of you who are giving feedback to other people, we ask to give, you, to give feedback to the two people who are below you in the forums. Um, if you know, happen to notice that those two are already people who have a lot of feedback, skip those and go a little bit deeper down so that we can spread out the feedback to people, the most people we can, so that everybody's getting some good feedback. The last thing I'll do is give a couple pointers to this coming week. Um, this week is on how games mean. Um, we have uh, a bunch of videos that we've shot, including uh, the usual suspects like Scott and myself, uh, but also Joel Levin of Minecraft EDU and Constant Steincooler. And we have uh, other videos that we've brought in from outside that we think are particularly relevant to the course as well. So hopefully you'll enjoy those and enjoy the activities that we've designed around those, and we'll see you online.